Chapter 22 The First Honor The practice of staging a walkout from an assembly in protest against something is nothing new. We learn from the Mahabharata that walkout was resorted to even in ancient times. The India of those days consisted of a number of independent states. Though there was one dharma and one culture throughout the land, the autonomy of each state was scrupulously respected. Occasionally, some strong and ambitious monarch would seek the assent of his fellow kings to his overlordship, which would sometimes be given without question. After receiving this assent, he would perform a grand Rajasuya sacrifice, which all the acquiescing kings would attend in token of acknowledgement of his supremacy. In accordance with this custom, the Pandavas invited the other kings after the slaying of Jarasandha and performed the Rajasuya. The time came for doing the honours of the occasion. The custom was to render first honour to the guest who was considered most worthy of taking precedence over all others. The question arose as to who should be honoured first. The grand sire was emphatically of the opinion that Sri Krishna, the king of Dwarka, should be honoured first, which was also Yudhishthira's own opinion. Yudhishthira followed the advice and under his instructions, Sahadeva offered to Sri Krishna the honours enjoined by tradition. Sishupala, the king of Chedi, who hated Krishna as wickedness alone can hate goodness, could not tolerate it. He laughed aloud in derision and said, How ridiculous and unjust! But I am not surprised. The man who sought advice was born in illegitimacy. This was an insulting allusion to the sons of Kunti. The man who gave advice was born of one who ever declines from high to low. This is in reference to the fact that Bhishma was born of Ganga, the river naturally flowing from higher to lower levels. And he who did the honours was also born illegitimately. And what shall I say of the man honoured? He is a fool by birth and a cowherd by breeding. Dumb indeed must be the members of this assembly if they have not a word to say to this. This is no place for worthy men. <clears throat> Some of the assembled princes applauded Sushupala. Encouraged by their applause, he addressed Yudhishthira. When there are so many kings gathered here, it is a shame that you paid the first honour to Krishna, not to render respect where it is rightly due and to render it where it is not merited are both equally grave offences. It is a pity that for all your imperial pretensions, you are ignorant of this. Getting more and more angry as he spoke, he continued, Ignoring the many kings and heroes who are here at your own invitation and in malicious despise of them, you have paid royal honours to a cowherd, boor, a mere nobody. Vasudeva, the father of Krishna, was but a servant of Ugrasena. He is not even of royal blood. Is this the place and the occasion to show your vulgar partiality for Krishna, the son of Devaki? Is this worthy of the children of Pandu? O sons of Pandu, you are raw, untaught youths, altogether ignorant of the way to conduct a royal assembly. This dotard Bhishma guided you foolishly and thus made fools of you. Krishna, why Krishna is no ruler at all? O oh, Yudhishthira, why did you dare to do this wretch first honour in this illustrious assemblage of kings? He has not even the merit of age. And if you admire grey hair, is not his father alive? You could not have honoured him as your preceptor. Surely, for your preceptor is Drona, who is here in this assembly. Is it as an expert in performing uh, sacrifices that you have honoured him? It cannot be, for Vyasa, the great master, is present. It would have been better even if he had paid the first honour to Bhishma, 
for dotted as he be he has still the merit of being the oldest man of your house your family teacher kripacharya is also present in this assembly how could you then pay the first honor to this cowherd ashwatthama the hero who is expert in all shastras is here how did you choose krishna forgetting him among the princes assembled here there is duryodhana and there is also karna the disciple of parashurama leaving him aside out of childish partiality you chose krishna for the first honor krishna who is neither royal nor heroic nor learned nor holy nor even hori who is nothing but a low cowherd thus you have dishonored us all whom you have invited here o kings it is not out of fear that we assented to yudhishthira's assuming the title of emperor we personally do not much care whether he is friend or foe but having heard much praise of his righteousness we wanted to see him uphold the flag of dharma he has now want only dishonored us after all the talk of virtue and dharma what virtue and or dharma was there in his giving priority of honor to this villain krishna who killed jarasandha in an unjust manner you should henceforth call yudhishthira an unrighteous person o krishna what impudence on your part to accept the undeserved honor which these misguided pandavas did you did you forget yourself or did you forget decent tradition or was it just a case of a dog snatching at a remnant of food which nobody cared to claim or god do you not really see that this farce is a ghastly mockery and disgrace to yourself it is like the mockery of showing beautiful things to a blind man or offering a maiden in marriage to a eunuch likewise these uh, kingly honors are really an affront to you it is now evident that the would be emperor yudhishthira the senile bhishma and this fellow krishna are all made of the same stuff after sishupala had spoken these harsh words he rose from his seat and walked out calling upon the other kings to join him in resenting the insult many of them followed him yudhishthira ran after them and tried to appease them with sweet words of peace but in vain for they were too angry to be appeased sishupala's aggressive vanity waxed to fighting pitch and there ensued a terrible fight between krishna and sishupala in which the latter was slain by his disgust the rajasuya was duly celebrated and yudhishthira recognized emperor